Hi, it's David at Art of David Smith. Uh, before we get started on this video, I just want to say thank you to everybody that has subscribed and helped me hit the 500 subscriber mark. Really, really appreciate it. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, but in the meantime, keep your subscriptions coming in. Uh, tell your friends, hopefully get them to subscribe. So, thanks again. Uh, here's to uh, a thousand subscribers now. So, back to the video. Uh, so in this video we're going to draw Chewbacca. Uh, probably my favourite of the characters from the Star Wars films. Uh, so I just thought I would show you how I would obviously put him together. So we've got this, I suppose it's like a lozenge type shape. Uh, as with a lot of the drawings, you need to look for a shape what's going to help you uh, convey what it is that you're drawing. Uh, it's going to help you get it onto the page in the right context, in the right place that your uh, your picture is is sitting in the page where you want it to be. I hope that's making sense. So. I've opted for a lozenge here, so eventually we're going to put all in all the features. So, what I've tried to do is because of the angle he's looking at us, uh, I've offset where his facial features are going to slightly be. Uh, so, I've put the cross frame in there just to give me a bit of a, a guide as to where he's going to end up being. So, even though we've got that cross frame in, we're going to start fleshing in some of the key features. Now obviously somebody like Chewy is predominantly hair so it's very important that we do get the key features correct in this sense. Uh, so what I'm doing is just the central line through the nose there and we drop into like the big big kind of lip. I suppose a bit like a moustache going on. Just, uh, fleshing this out. Now, the good thing is with an exercise like this, it's a completely different way of drawing. But if you're ever fancying drawing pets or anything like that, it's going to be really good practice. So, yeah. roughly put in this eye. And again, just like with all the videos, I'm drawing it slightly darker than I normally would. So that you can pick up on it on the uh, camera. You can hear that person sneaking around. It's my daughter who's... Uh, Currently still working at home, due to the obvious. <coughs> so I'm going to just roughly put the eyes in, have a look in the positioning of those. So this is going to look a lot <clears throat> tighter as well when we start actually shading into these areas, tightening up. So obviously around where Chewie's eyes are, it's predominantly black, it's quite dark, uh, the overall eye area. So this Chewie that we've gone for is more of the as the realistic Chewie that I remember from the Star Wars films. And what I'll probably do is, if everybody's uh, up for it, or I get the comments, we'll do a young Chewbacca version as well, maybe. Uh, so if you want me to uh, look to do that in a, a new video, 
leave a comment uh, but also leave comments for anything that you'd like me to cover in any of the videos uh, one of the subscribers asked me to draw a female clown as well as a realistic rose uh, which I've done I've got around to doing those uh, so hopefully uh, you enjoyed those and you have if you've been uh, watching the videos Fleshing in where the mouth area end up being. So again, at this stage, <coughs> we're using this lozenge as a guide, but we're not sticking to it hard and fast. The lozenge merely is is there to help with scaling and, and things like that and positioning angles uh, once we've got the bare essentials in there the lozenge kind of will be redundant and we'll just erase that from the page anyway so what I'm kind of doing now is just where the main Clumps of fur are going to be putting those in as a guide, trying to draw upon key features. So, so there's a colour change, significant colour change in Chewie's face from around the eyes and mouth area to the colour he is over the rest of his body and the top of his hair. So that is going to be one of the main areas where we'll see some difference. Longer hair just above his eyes, drooping down as well. And again, we're going to soften the back of this lozenge until we no longer see it really. Just roughing in where these main areas are going to end up being. And again, a lot of these lessons, what you're seeing here the way I'm constructing this very similar to how I do my pet drawings obviously Chewy the ultimate pet sidekick whatever you want to call him uh, I prefer to think of him as a sidekick Uh, areas of hair end up being quite matted knock out our crosshairs that we started with and parts of this lozenge now can be lost and there we have the rough outline to our chewy is constructed So, just like with portraits, just like with uh, any animal drawings that I do, what I tend to do is 
starts around the eyes. Again, if you get the eyes right, then the rest of the drawing tends to fall out. So concentrate around the eyes. And again, I am working on this a lot quicker than I normally would, so elements of it may well have to be corrected off a camera, which are maybe the more boring elements, just tweak a line here and there just to make it correct. But what I'm trying to do is retain that highlight in the eye. I'll go into this with a proper 4B and a 6B pencil, something like that. At a later point, just to darken these real dark areas up. Now, with the whites of the eye, we've got to drag the shading quite far down because obviously the overhang that you would get so much hair is going to cast shadows over the actual eyeball itself. So what I do when I'm doing all hair on people, hair on dogs, cats, whatever, it's very important that when you start putting in the hair, you follow the direction that the hair is going. If you start going against the grain, it's going to show up. It's not going to look correct. It's not going to flow like you need it to flow over a head or a animal, whatever you're drawing at the time. So retain the way that hair flows. Now, obviously with Chewy around this eye area, I've not the hair right up to the eye. But it is very, very dark. So we're gonna go in with the blending tool a little. Soften it around that eye, drag some of that colour along the eyeball as well. That eye is starting to come together now. So, assuming I can get the other eye something like. The darker area, just like with our own eyes. I mean, after all, there is an actor in this suit, which is the uh, eyes we're seeing through. So you've got the darker border to the eye, the central pupil, but just trying to retain some have to be as bold as maybe on this side where it's able to catch the light a bit more but you need to keep some of that highlight on the eye to give it life and of course the lights coming in from this side this eye on this side is actually a lot darker a lot more shade involved in this one. So it's worth spending a little bit of time getting these right 
at this stage because if you get the eyes right the rest of your drawing will flow after that and obviously with something like Chewbacca it's really a case of layering hair on hair to get the flow of his fur coming down his face back a little bit what I'll probably do off camera is I'm not quite happy with how the highlights are actually matching up on there so rather than rub that out and go again I'll come back in on that off camera and just tweak that slightly but with this side happy with this side not quite but I'm just going to persevere with it for the moment because I want to show you the other aspects what we're going to draw into here now after I've got the eyes in what I'll tend to do is go down into the, the nose area again it's not one of the critical factors along with the mouth uh, so start with the eyes get those correct into the nose sort that out and then down into the mouth usually I find if I follow in that order everything just starts coming together and it starts working and obviously if you make any errors you can tweak rectify even start again if necessary so we get the nasal cavities in there first and then just above the edge of the nasal area we start popping in some of the shade and what you tend to get with uh, animal noses and this is uh, if you look at a, a dog's nose you get this slightly dimpling effect and Chewie's got that obviously in the film as well so what you want to do is I tend to use this slightly shuffly pencil technique so what I'm doing is as I shuffle it around kind of working around in circles and building up similar texture to that what you would find on a dog's nose or pet's nose anything like that and working it around and as you get down to this bottom area and again because the light's coming in from this side this particular side I'm working on is going to be slightly darker the majority of the light is hitting this side of the nose so again just as we hit the hair on the bridge of the nose a slightly dark area there again as well and with your shading tool again the same action you slowly go into it and on the edge here it doesn't need to be pure black you need a slight highlight but not a white highlight that way it's going to give it that 3D feel again just like when we were constructing the nose in the video how to draw a face so if you refer to that video again a lot of those lessons which uh, is the reason I did those lessons when you're constructing characters like this or anything in the future a lot of those shading lessons which are in those videos are all pertinent when you're drawing something like this obviously a different beastie altogether but how we shade it how we draw it they're all relevant lessons so again what I'll do is I'll leave the nose at that point and I'll come down to his mouth again we covered this in a video as well 
So just like with our mouth, we come from the dark area and we're shading up. So we're going to drag these lines up and this is going to give the feel of the lips. We work his way around this side, shade up, keeping that darker area down here. So what we need, we get too carried away, is we need to pop him a few teeth in. hint at these teeth underneath this top lip over to this side so then when we put that in a little bit darker the shade of the mouth and is that going to give us something to shade off properly for the lips also, it really helps with the construction of another one of the key areas. So again, if you've not watched the video on how to draw a mouth, it's worth a watch. It's not a long video particularly, but you'll pick up some invaluable lessons. and constructing I don't know if you can hear that meowing outside that's our neighbour's cat he's come around for a visit very loud handsome grey fella he is he often comes around first thing in the morning wakes everybody up but we don't mind him because he's very nice at some point it would be nice to uh, actually draw him and uh, immortalize him because he's quite a character so I'm starting to put that together now that's bringing the mouth together so again as we start to work into some of the fur it's particularly draw attention to this area because it's got this very pronounced lip area where the I suppose if it were a human would refer it to it as like a moustache so I'm going to draw some of those key lines in that's going to give us the overall flow how the fur moves in this particular part of the face. Again over the other side. Get that into there. <coughs> into the chin area. Now where the bottom lip overhangs we're going to pick up some of the shade onto this fur which is very handy for us because it helps us frame the lips as well when we start putting the shade into there <coughs> excuse me drag those areas down and show the direction the fur is moving in when we hit those parts. Again we can soften those areas with the shading tool but after we've softened them it's worth going back in with a sharp pencil just to sharpen some of those areas. So if I show you that quickly so say here we build up this darker tone 
in the chin. We can then go in with our shading tool, soften that, again using the direction that the flow of the fur moves in. But when we go and use the shading tool, we lose some of the definition. So then at that point, we've got the overall tone of the area. Just quickly go back through and pick out some of the sharpness in the hairs again in those areas. And that will really bring that back to life then. Uh, and it doesn't become too fluffy and woolly. Again, when we get around the eyes, we'll do that to get the overall shade into those areas. But then we'll come back in again just to add in a little bit of definition. Again underneath the eyes. You don't want the white in there because it's not a white fur that obviously Chewy's got. But you don't want it to look too fluffy either. So and that is kind of the negative part with a shading tool. Great for softening areas, but you've got to remember to sharpen them back up afterwards in something particularly like this. So, we've got the rough elements here. I could carry on doing this and explaining how I'm going to build up this fur. and bore the heck out of you and make an overly long video or what I can carry on doing is I'll speed this section up uh, off camera or I'll restart it, speed this section up so you can see how I then build up the rest of the face and then I'll obviously come back at the end and just finish the video so that'll do for now, uh, I'll catch you in the next part Okay, so we're back. Now, obviously, you've watched this middle part of the video sped up to watch how I uh, have put the fur in. It's very loose at the moment uh, for the purposes of the video, really. I don't want to spend hours and hours putting all this fur in, but it's going to give you an idea of how uh, we can construct something which is completely different from what we've been doing on any of the other videos. In this instance, it happens to be Chewbacca but a lot of these lessons can be extrapolated into drawing pets, drawing horses, all those kind of things. So 
go with it, have a play, doesn't have to be Chewbacca, could be a pet dog, but use the exercises what we've used in this drawing to draw something a little bit different, something out of your comfort zone, keep pushing yourself, but in the meantime I'm just going to tweak about with this because I still need to sort this eye out as I mentioned earlier, uh, but I'll put it all together uh, and pop the video out there, but in the meantime thank you again for the 500 subscribers, uh, thank you to anybody who does leave comments, uh, if you want to see me draw a young Chewbacca, a cartoon Chewbacca or anything like that or any other characters leave your comments, uh, don't forget to leave me a like and uh, subscribe in there as well but all your likes and your comments are a massive help as well when it comes to the algorithms for YouTube so please comment on them uh, and, and leave a like, it's very much appreciated but in the meantime stay safe, uh, I'll catch you on the next video all the best, thank you, bye bye